Greetings. It's great to be with you again. Uh, my name is George Parrott with Christ Mandate for Missions here in sunny Fort Mill, South Carolina. We pray that you're doing well and you're looking unto the Lord, our God, during this time of the COVID-19 crisis. We pray health and safety and protection for you and yours. And we thank you, Father, for watching over us. Lord, we thank you for your word that is alive and living in us. And I'm just going to give an update and some encouragement to you all and uh, let you know what we've been up to at CMM in the mission side here the last uh, week or so. As you probably know, we have uh, many, many missionaries and pastors and churches connected with our global family around the world, and we're so thankful for them. And uh, I was also reviewing some um, of our doctoral thesis papers for graduation coming up with uh, CMM College of Theology. And one of our students is one of our great friends and one of our heroes and probably yours too. And I encourage you to search out uh, videos from Back to Jerusalem and done by Eugene Bach. And he has a great podcast and he's a dear brother of ours. And um, he had in his paper, um, you do not prove that you love God by feeding his sheep. You feed his sheep because you love him. That's so well said. And, you know, with this crisis going on, many of the day laborers who are poor, um, struggling people in their countries, particularly in India and Pakistan, but others too in Africa, in Congo, Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Tanzania, Malawi, uh, many countries have really been struggling because these day laborers are also on lockdown like the rest of the world. They can't go out to eat. Many times there's uh, roadblocks and, and they can get uh, fined or ticketed or arrested even for violating the stay at home lockdown rules in place now that vary from country to country. And so we get communications regularly from our friends overseas and many of them, many, many of them have reported that their people are starving. They're strong in the faith. Some are fearful and have anxiety. And the pastors uh, are strong in the faith, are encouraging them, pointing them to the word, having online prayer meetings or getting together on their cell phones to communicate. But the real um, emergency, the real crisis, is that they don't have food to eat. So we have put out some appeals to our friends, partners, and social media and emails through our newsletter online, um, asking for prayers and help. And we want to thank you so much, our CMM partners, for being so prayerful in lifting these uh, our, our brethren up in many countries and also so generous in supporting uh, CMM and us sending funds over. We've sent thousands of dollars over each week to uh, we ask the Lord of who we send and how much we send, uh, but we do the best we can, depending on the size of the churches, the number of their churches. We sent some into Pakistan a few days ago to one of our friends there uh, who has 185 churches there in Pakistan. And others may have one church, some may have 10, some may have 50, some have hundreds of churches in India and also in Pakistan. And so thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for uh, your heart and your prayers for the fellow uh, believers and our brethren in the body of Christ around the world that are uh, really uh, hungry and some are starving at this time. And just ask you to continue to pray for them. And as the Lord leads, you can go to our website and any amount, a dollar or a penny, a hundred dollars, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, the Lord is multiplying that, adding it with other uh, members of CMM and partners and donors and um, great people from around the world have been giving. A lot has come in from all of the habitable five continents, really. And so we're so thankful for your generosity and your prayers, of course. I want to encourage you with a scripture from Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. I may not read it all, but you can go and read this just to... Uh, build yourself up in the most holy faith as we look to the Lord, our God. He's our 
All in all, he's our source, he's our provider, he's our protection, he's our peace, and he's our glory. And he's the father of glory, and he's pouring out his glory on you even as you're watching this video, I pray. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. He's so good to us. Do you know that I read uh, years ago, I think it's pretty close to still being true, that the poorest 1% in America are more wealthy than 99% of the people in the rest of the world. So count your blessings. We're so, so blessed. We each have challenges. Some may be out of work now with the um, crisis and the lockdown going on. And we pray for you that uh, you'll get your government check soon and the Lord will multiply what's in your pantry, in your cupboard, and in your bank account. And others are, are uh, not suffering so badly. But let's pray for one another here as well as praying for those in the body of Christ, our global family. That's God's heart, as we read in John 17. And then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences, the great magnitude and of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is His love. Do you feel it even now? I do. I, I love being in the glory. And the Word is one of the, the best ways to just release His glory. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Now we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church and every generation through Jesus Christ, and all that will yet be manifest through time and eternity. Amen. Wow. To be in his presence often leaves me uh, speechless and in awe. And I just pray that you um, turn off the news, turn off the social media from time to time, and just sit still. Go outside in many parts of the, the world. It's a nice weather. You can hear the birds singing and feel the breeze. Take a walk in the still of the day and just enjoy worshiping God, being with him, listening to him, his still small voice, his whispers. You can hear the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Blow a shofar if you have it to make a joyful noise and to know that we have the victory in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, our healer, our advocate. He's our everything. He's our all in all. So bless you and thank you for praying for our CMM missionaries and faithful families around the world during this time as we, we stand in the gap for those that are hurting, hungry, and starving, those that are facing persecution. And pray for our brethren in India and Pakistan who are being refused food by the government, by the military, uh, because they will not renounce Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This is, in anybody's definition, a violation of human rights. And I was on a call yesterday and we've been sending letters to President Trump and the administration in Washington, D.C., asking them to, to make a public statement and, if necessary, to use economic sanctions to 
uh, help enforce and to reduce the persecution of Christians or people of other faiths just because they're not Hindu as in India or Muslim as in Pakistan. Where is the love? Where is the God of Elijah? And we are calling forth truth and righteousness and justice and basic freedoms that every creation of God, every man, woman, and child in the earth is entitled to. And so pray, write to your congressmen, your senators, write to the White House about these atrocities that are happening. Pray also for Nigeria. There was a, um, a murder of several families just a couple of days ago where they were all beheaded because they were Christians. And this is an intense time, but we know the glory will shine brighter and brighter on our faces as we keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So God bless you and thank you for your prayers. Let us know how we can pray for you. You can contact our office. My email will be on the screen and we have many intercessors that will be happy to pray with you. We also have prophetic team volunteers. If you would like to uh, have someone pray for you, go to the Lord on your behalf and to speak a life and faith and prophetic uh, destiny and fulfillment into your life, let us know. We have teams and volunteers, precious people that are very gifted in hearing the voice of the Lord that would be happy to pray and to prophesy to you and yours. God bless you and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.